to Mark chapter 2, and I'm just going to fill you in that Mark 2 and Mark 3 go together, um, and, and we'll kind of uh, get into it in just uh, a few uh, seconds. Um, the topic today is rest. Now, now, before we get very far, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions to see where you are in this whole rest idea. Have you ever, and this uh, might sound like a Jeff Foxworthy sort of thing, have you ever uh, taken a vacation and come back more tired than before you left? Have you ever done that? Yeah, yeah. How many people relate to that? Yeah. I, I, I forget who it was. Oh, it was uh, when we were in, in Montana in December. Um, that our daughter complained about us, that we're too active. And so when they have vacation uh, with us, it's not really a vacation because um, we're just driving the whole time. I mean, we're just running, do, trying to do multiple things. Same time, have you ever gone to work on Monday morning and you're more tired from the weekend than you were the, <laughs> when you left on Friday? You know? Can you relate to that? Did, and why is that? It wasn't always that way, was it? Because how, how many of you remember the days? Remember, uh, raise your hand if you know this. What's a blue law? You know what a blue law is? Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. Remember the days? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you didn't go anywhere on Sunday. Why? <laughs> Nothing was open. Yeah. Nothing was open. There were no stores open. One grocery store. Yeah, generally there was something open so you could go... You could go get cough syrup for the kids, or you could, yeah, you know, whatever. There, there was something open, but but basically you didn't go to restaurants because they were all closed. You, you know, uh, Suzanne and I, I think it was last Sunday, uh, decided to run to Cookville because you know Cookville's a big town, and yeah. that's a big city, and so we decided to run to Cookville because we wanted to go to Hobby Lobby because you, maybe it was two weeks ago. We wanted to go to Hobby Lobby and get some uh, some backing fabric for a quilt. And we pull up, and I'm sitting there thinking, man, this parking lot looks awful empty. And, and I'm thinking, are they closed on Sundays? Yeah. And so we pulled in, and I said, Suzanne, I think they're closed. And sure enough, yeah, it's closed on Sunday. Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Chick-fil-A, that's another one. They're closed on Sundays. Yeah. And, and boy, people make a big deal about that. Uh, so what's changed? Well, we have changed. And the other thing that's, that's changed used to be you saw more people in church each and every board staff. Now, this is nationwide statistics, but nationwide, on any given Sunday, only 17.7% of the population is in church on Sunday. And what used to be, if you were a regular attender, you went every board state to church. And, 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 you know, it, it, it's interesting uh, now ministering in a, in a uh, congregation of this generation because most of you come from that background. That's why we see more of you on Sundays. That's, uh, and, and consistently almost every Sunday. Uh, that's not true across the country. Uh, most uh, ministers just talk about they see people uh, once every three, four weeks uh, in order to be considered a regular attender, you only have to come once every eight weeks nowadays. <laughs> uh, yeah. And used to be, we used to be, we would call that uh, somewhere in the spectrum of the the Easter Christmas Christians. You know, uh, you only saw them at either Easter or Christmas or both. Um, now, it's, if you think once every eight weeks, you only see people six times a year. That's crazy, isn't it? Why? Well. We've gotten more busy on the weekends. Uh, one of the things that's happened, particularly with younger families, is uh, they've got the kids out for sports. Uh, and, you know, go home this afternoon, you'll, you'll find out about some dad punched out some coach because things didn't go well for the soccer game or whatever, the basketball or whatever's going on right now. Uh, yeah, yeah you just, we're, we're different nowadays, aren't we? I, th- I think beyond just the culture shift in our country, there's something else that's taken place, and that is we've forgotten what it means to have a Sabbath rest. And, and, and uh, it used to be we, we would talk about the Sabbath, which, by the way, technically we're wrong. This is not the Sabbath. Technically, as far as the Bible is concerned, 
yesterday was the Sabbath. The Sabbath was from sundown Friday until sundown Saturday. However, in Christianity, we turn the first day of the week, Sunday, into our day of worship, because that was Jesus' resurrection. So right from the beginning, there was a shift in Christian circles, the first day of the week being the main worship day. But it's not the Sabbath. However, we have forgotten the idea of the Sabbath. I've even had an elder argue, not here, uh, I've even had an elder argue with me about the idea of the Sabbath rest, saying, well, Jesus is our Sabbath rest. Yes, that's true. But I think if we take and we look at Scripture, we find out that there's something in Sabbath rest that God knew about us and link the two together. So we'll, we'll look at the scripture today. Um, however, we have to be careful of creating our own man-made rules when it comes to that. And, it, and actually, I think the generations past that we had, where we had the blue laws and, and you know, you just didn't do anything on Sunday, I, I think we made mistakes there too. So let's look at this. Uh, here's our key passage. Mark chapter 2, verses 27 and 28. Then he said to them, Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now that's a crazy statement. Let's just, you know, uh, that popped out of the birthday cake. Um, and and um, man, that's a strange statement just to start off with. Rick, what are we going to talk about? Now, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. You probably know the passage already. Well, let's go ahead and get a little context. I told you chapters 2 and 3 of Mark go together. Chapters 2 and 3, as we, uh, no different than our uh, adult Bible study this morning, uh, are uh, pictures of Jesus having conflict with the Pharisees. And specifically, it was over issues regarding the Sabbath. There's other things that go on in chapters 2 and 3, but, but there's a huge amount of conflict over the Sabbath in, in, uh, in the book of Mark 2 and 3. Uh, we're going to jump in and we're going to look at really what precipitated that. So let, let's, let's look at verse 23. We're going to back up just a little bit. We're not going to go right to the beginning of the chapter, although you could. So let's look and see what's going on here. One Sabbath, okay, it's, a, it's sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, it's a Sabbath. Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. Now, for those of you who grew up in wheat country, Iowa boy, uh, so for those of you who grew up in wheat country, um, you're going to know what's going on here. Uh, the guys are hungry. The disciples are hungry. They're walking through a wheat field, and if you grew up, you could take and you could strip the head off, and you could rub it in your hands. You would rub it together, and that outer um, um, fluss, you know, would just, yeah, yeah, just, you could blow it off, and it's actually tasty to eat. To eat those whole wheat kernels. And we don't know what wheat looks like. For those of you who go to the grocery store and you buy your meat <laughs> in plastic the way God designed it, no. Um, yeah, and, and that little bag of wheat flour, it doesn't look like what came off of that stalk. And, and, and it's kind of nutty. Interestingly enough, even not roasted, it's got kind of this nutty flavor. I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. And it's nutritional. It's good stuff. So the guys are hungry and they're, they're walking through the grain fields on Sunday, but the Pharisees have a problem with it. Now, um, you should know they had some pretty strange ideas about the Sabbath. We have these laws dating back to the Old Testament um, that Scripture talks about, but as with anything man does, they had to over-explain it. And so they had to explain, okay, what is work on the Sabbath and what isn't? They went so far as this, because it was a good thing if a poor man came to you and begged, it was a good thing for you to give him some money or give him some food or help him out. You're supposed to do that. That's biblical law. However, if it happened to occur on the Sabbath, here's the law. 
And I've, I've got the mission of that here. You can go back and you can check it out. It's interesting. So the rabbinical teachings on top of the Bible said, okay, if it's the Sabbath and the beggar reaches in through the window, you can hand them some food or alms or whatever. However, if the beggar's outside the window and doesn't reach in, it's unlawful for you to help him out because that's work for you to reach out the window and hand it to him. Do you see where the problem is? Maybe straining at gnats and swallowing candles. Camels, not candles. Um, yeah. Mark chapter 2, verse 24. So the Pharisees said to him, Look! See how sinful you guys are. No, that's me having that. Look! Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Jesus answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? Okay, you guys are going to throw your rabbinical uh, mandates at me. Let me throw some Bible at you. So you remember when David and his guys were hungry? Verse 26, In the days of Abiathar the priest, he entered the uh, house of God and ate the consecrated bread. <laughs> which is lawful only for priests to eat. Ooh. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man. Here's her Hebrews passage. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now, uh, you have a little bit more context. Why this big deal over the Sabbath with the Pharisees? You know what started it all? If you really back up and read this chapter 2, Jesus happened to heal a guy on the Sabbath. Boy, that really got under their skin. And you don't do that. You don't violate our rules. You just don't do that. So they're running around like, you know, like that. Well, you can probably figure this out. You've seen something like this probably on the news this week. And they're running around pointing their fingers just waiting for somebody to mess up. You know, and, and, and you know, just wait, 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 wait. You guys are doing wrong. You're doing, you're doing wrong. You're doing wrong. You know, it's that, that crazy. They're foaming at the mouth almost. I mean, it's just crazy. And and they're upset. And he's doing this stuff on the Sabbath, and you're not supposed to do that. Wait, he healed somebody on the Sabbath. Isn't that a big deal? I mean, isn't that a really big deal? So Jesus opens up a can of worms for us because he said something interesting. He says the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Well, let's really go back. If we're going to use the Bible, let's really go back. Let's go back to the beginning, Genesis chapter 2. And, and, and let's think about how this transpires. Thus, chapter 2, verse 1, thus the heavens and the earth were completed all in their vast array. We've already been through chapter 2, I mean chapter 1. And uh, sixth day, God has uh, uh, created everything. He, he kind of sits back in his, in his lounge. You know, it's a barco lounge. Uh, and he sits back, kicks up his feet, decides to rest on the seventh day. But on the end of the sixth day, he says, this is not just good, this is very good. I like this stuff that I created. I like this creation thing. And then verse, chapter 2, verse 1, um, we're getting it explained to us again. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their best array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Holy as in set apart. Holy as in set aside. Holy as in important. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Kind of interesting, isn't it? You ever think about that? I mean, we're talking to God here. Uh, let me let me bend your little noodles this morning. Why would God need to rest? I mean, really, you know, we're talking to God. You know, he, he's the source of everything. He's omnipotent, all powerful. He's omniscient, all knowing. Uh, he's 
omnipresent. He's everywhere, all at the same time. And we're God. You know, this is we're talking God here. Uh, he's also without a body, he's spirit. Why does he need to rest? And some of you already you fast forward and you went to the end of the book, you read the answer. <laughs> Duh, overachievers. Um, he didn't need it, but it was necessary. Because there is something about the nature of rest. You know, we've, they've done studies over and over and over again about the nature of rest for the human being. It's not just a physical thing. Do you realize that there is a benefit to just, just kind of pulling over to the off-ramp for a little while, metaphorically? And, and by the way, you could still be active. Could God have acted on the seventh day? I'm sure could have. Uh, by the way, was he likely? I, I'm guessing there were a few things going on on the seventh day. But it's this idea of rest. That it's that off-ramp sort of, let's pull the car over. And by the way, it's a lookout. So let's just kind of check things out. And, you know, you're, you're on the Blue Ridge Parkway, so to speak. And you're looking out, you know, across this stone, you know, wall. And there's all that, well, it's the Blue Ridge, right? It's pretty. It's beautiful. Have you ever been there? Have, anybody ever been there? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've been there. Or any place like that. Where you, you know, it's those, those, those lookouts, you know, the pullover. You pull over, and you just kind of look out, and you just kind of, whoa. Now that's beautiful. Studies have shown over and over and over and over again, we need that. It replenishes us physically. There's also a replenishment that takes place mentally, and particularly when we get to this idea that Sabbath rest for worship of God takes place. There is a spiritual benefit as well. We need that. And yet, here's the crazy thing. And I think, it is, we talked about in the Bible study this morning, Satan's having a heyday in our country because he's given us materialism. He's given us easy access to things. He's made us self-focused, self-centered. You know, he, um, he, He's just whispered in our ear. He, he doesn't make us do anything. We choose it. But you know, he, he's provided all these opportunities. And boy, are we, are we, we're running after it like a dog after its own vomit. I mean, we just are. And, and yet, the more we do those sort of things, and the more active we get, particularly on the weekends, and particularly on vacations, and particularly on those sort of things, we miss this idea of Sabbath rest. And we consume ourselves with these things, and then we wonder why we're exhausted. Um, I, a bunch of my buddies just last week were in Colorado, and they went for a convention. And boy, were, were they talking about needing it. And they just needed it. They went and they just, it was, it was rest. It was respite for them. But they needed it also just because of the, uh, the dictates, the demands, that just the issues of ministering to people and caring for their needs. It's huge. I, I, I discovered something. Suzanne was really upset that I didn't go. And I wasn't all that bothered. I, I, I really wanted to go. But, um, man, we spent too much money last year. We just... Um, we spent two thousand dollars just going into that convention down in Orlando last year. That was that was ridiculous. I mean, I, I just um, it, it, you know there was a part of me, and you know, as I'm praying, I'm just thinking, no. It, do you know where where I get my Sabbath rest? And it, I talk about it all the time. It's that workshop, and I go in there, and, and I'm in the act of creation. But if you only knew how much alone time with God that I have. And I've just got that, it's so relaxing. There's stuff going on. I'm, I'm less tired. I'm more refreshed. I enjoy, I, I mean, it's like a, it's like this holy place that I go to. That just encourages me and uplifts me. And, and, and uh, yeah, it's a workshop. But 
at the same time, it's, it's just one of those great places where God and I can just talk like you wouldn't believe. In, in Montana, it was getting on the road and driving places because you had to drive a minimum of two hours to get anywhere. You know, to go to Walmart was two hours. You know, to go to the next church was six hours away. I mean, it's it's, it's big country out there. And so it's just you and God in the car for however long it takes you to get there. And so it was relaxing. And so here's God not needing rest, but rest was necessary. And on the seventh day, he sits back, he kicks back, he says, this is good. I like what I've done. Now look what comes next. The finding principles. Exodus chapter 20, verse 9. Six days you, and that's you, shall labor and do all your work. So work your heart out for six days. I mean, just, just I mean, do it. But on the Sabbath, uh, on the seventh day, it's, it's a Sabbath to the Lord your God. It's, it's set aside for Him. It's set aside for you and for Him. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter. And by the way, if play is work, you're working nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Yet another reminder. We're talking God is comparison. You're made in the image of God. God doesn't need it. And it's obvious since we do so much play on Sundays or on the weekend and so much play on our vacations, we can operate a lot like God. We can keep on going. But it's necessary for God to take that rest, and it's necessary for us as well. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Something special. So what happens when we get to where Jesus is in dealing with these Pharisees, when the rules undermine principles? Mark chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Another time, Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Now that's, you know, this isn't just crazy, this is stupid crazy. <clears throat> You know, they're already upset with him for doing things like this on the Sabbath. You, you know, which, talk about rules. They built up so many rules. Um, I, we know, we know you're going to do something like this again. So we're going to watch. And boy, we can get it then. That's crazy stupid. That is crazy stupid. That's hate-filled, consuming hate sort of craziness that you hate someone so much that you're sitting there waiting for the fail in your mind. But remember, Jesus is trying to teach us a principle. They're waiting for him to actually do good on the Sabbath. Another time, Jesus went into the synagogue and a man with 